The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gwajabiamila, on Thursday said tertiary education system in the country is severely and dangerously lacking in capabilities needed to build a nation. He said a decline in the quality of scholarship and academic output and of the graduates coming out of the tertiary institutions were the clearest confirmation that Nigerian tertiary institutions lacked the capacity to build a nation that would survive through the current moment of change and turbulence. Bajabi Amila spoke in Oshobo, Washim State, while delivering the first Tunde Ponle annual lecture titled Building a Tertiary Truly 21st Century University, Task Beyond Government, held at the main campus of the Oshim State University. Suggesting solutions to the problem, Bajabi Amila said issues of curriculum and teaching methods, as well as fair assessment, should be part of any reform considerations. He called for a review of curricula and teaching methods with a view to situating Nigerian practices in the context of global labor needs. Still in the news, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, has commended the China Civil Engineering Construction Company over the spate of work along the Lagos Ibado Rail Corridor. The minister, while revealing that the construction work along the rail corridor is coming to its end, said the project is in its final phase. He also instructed that communication equipment should be installed at the stations within the next two months. Our correspondent, Amadine Uyi, tells us more. It was supposed to be a routine monthly inspection, but happened to be the last inspection for the year. The Lagos Ibadan Rail Corridor, the postal boy for Nigeria's rail transformation agenda, speaks volumes of the federal government's commitment to be quitting a modern rail infrastructure for Nigerians. In any country that must develop in this world must have more than one commercial uh, city. It must have various ones where the economy is strong. And this is what the rail does. It helps other cities in the nation to become economically viable. Many believe their new Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail line which is counterparts being constructed across the country, will have tremendous impact on Africa's largest economy. First and foremost, you're going to have a lot of people who work, live outside of Lagos, coming into Lagos, doing business and moving. So that in itself is going to help satellite communities to develop. Secondly, it's going to reduce the amount of trucks that you see on the road. I've been in petroleum business for 23, 24 years, the first aspect of it is that that's going to take it off. So you can move products on rail, it helps. Then you have goods from the ports. You need to be able to evacuate the ports and all of that so that goods can come in line. That is excellent. Then it also means that you can then relocate factories outside of Lagos into Ogun State, into Oyo State and all of that, which means that the economy of these areas are going to develop. I pity a driver who rides from here to Maduguri and the air vehicle will not last, plugging it from Lagos to Maduguri. But it can last if you go to Kano and take and go to Maduguri. And the accidents will reduce, the road will last longer, because the road that is designed for heavy traffic, have heavy as load, the money will pump on maintaining the road. Whether you do it after one year, there will be depression, because it's overused. The Minister of Transportation, Rochime Amechi, took time to inspect the train stations being built along the corridor, assessing the extent and quality of work done. He says the project, which is in its final phase, has surmounted several challenges experienced at its commencement. At the beginning, you know, we had challenges of water pipes, sewer pipes, gas pipes, petroleum. It was worse when we got to um, the, the seaport. You know, we had to get, we had to fly in some engineers and, and new technology from from um, Italy. That had to, some of the pipes, the NPC didn't know who owned them. Most people don't know who owned what, where they're heading to. The damage it will cause if we lifted those pipes out of the way. This is the fact that you may not have fuel for a very long time in Nigeria. So we came with a new technology in which you can actually run this train on top of that pipes without seeing the pipes, uh, without having any impact on the pipe. At least we are running now between Ibadan and Lagos. Last time they promised we'd get to station, we are here right at the station. No, we are before the same roads last time we came here. And uh, that was uh, on the 30th of November. Today is uh, 20th, and they promised by the time we get next, get, come next time, we will get to the station. There is the platform, so we are at the station. 
Mr. Amici commended the work done by the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, CCECC. Those of you who go with us on this, you will agree that this is the first time we are taking a ride to a Biden major station. So, shouldn't you at least, uh, uh, how do you put it, not appreciate them, just call, commend them that they have been able to get to the end of the 156 kilometers. The rest two, two kilometers remaining is one, 157, 158. That is not part of the contract. The contract is 156 kilometers. It's very rare that you will see money being put to use for the purpose for which it is collected with the quality for which you expect it to, see, uh, to be seen and then to follow it through to make sure that it's being spent in the way that it should be. So it's a good thing. I think Nigerians should be happy. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. Thank you, Amadine.